This is New Hire 365. I'm Debbie Yarwood and I'm going to show you 10 ways to make your new hire's first day amazing. Because there really isn't any excuse. We've all been there. We've all had a first day at work. Some might have been amazing. Others could have been disastrous. And you know how that makes you feel. Let's say your new hire is sitting in reception right now. Let's call him Jack. You know how he feels. He is feeling really excited because this is a new chapter in his life and he's ready to get going, but he's also feeling pretty anxious. Will he like the job? Will he even be able to do the job? What if he doesn't gel with the team? Has he just made a massive mistake by resigning from his old job or turning down the other offer he had to come and work for you? This is really important to get right. It's critical not only for Jack, but for you too. Because giving a new hire a great first day at work sets them up for success. And it means that you're much more likely to have a loyal, engaged employee going forward. But we have no time to waste. He's waiting. Let's get going. First things first, your new hire's day should always start a little later than yours. Ask them to arrive about an hour into the day. Normally first days are on a Monday and we all know what Mondays are like. You're probably turning up for work with the world of worry on your shoulders, wondering how on earth you're going to get everything done today and on board a new hire. Giving yourself that little bit of breathing space right at the beginning means you can clear some of your email, make yourself a coffee, make sure everything is ready to go for your new hire and then when he does turn up, you can be 100% present with him. With the best intention in the world, it's really hard to do that when you know that there's crisis falling around your head. The first thing you're probably going to do when he turns up is show him to his workspace. So make sure that's clean and tidy. Nothing worse than turning up and having to peel off the photos of your predecessors, beautiful children, cats or goldfish, or clearing away the coffee cups that have been there for two or three weeks already. So the three things you need to do here, really. Make sure his workspace is clear, make sure all his access is set up for all the systems he needs to use, and why not find some, some goodies that you can give him. Anything with a logo, I'm sure marketing has got something, some notepads, you know the stuff. Leave it on his desk, yeah, he's got a bit of a gift when he arrives first thing. This says that you're ready for him, that you're looking forward to him starting, and you've done some preparation. If he turns up and everything's a mess, well, it looks like you've just only remembered he's starting first thing this morning. Before your new hire arrives, make sure that you prep your team. There's nothing worse than turning up and no one really knowing who you are. Ever start a school in the middle of a term? You know how that feels. So make sure your team know his name, his background, what his job is going to be and, and, and why you've brought him in. And make sure you prep not just your immediate team but also the team around you. So the people that he's going to interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Nothing feels better if you're walking along the corridor on your first day and someone comes up to you and says, hey, you must be Jack, first day, good luck. It just means that people have bothered and, and people have really thought about you arriving. Top tip, if you can get your CEO or one of the senior management team to come up and, and welcome him by name, bingo, that's dynamite. So listen up here, this is one of the most important things you can do on day one and it is overlooked far too often. Sit down with your new hire and talk through his job responsibilities. Simple, huh? You'll be amazed how many people I've spoken to from graduate trainee right through to senior director that really didn't fully understand what they were supposed to be doing for the first few weeks. So take the opportunity to, to walk through what you need him to do. Now, I know you would have talked through this at interview, but he was on a different playing field then. He wasn't thinking about doing the job. He was thinking about getting it. So rather than just going through the job description, because I know that that is normally full of corporate blurb and buzzwords that no one really understands, think about the five things that you want him to do this year. Talk about what input he will have in those, who he will have to work with, what it will involve and why, why it's important to the business, what, how it will make a difference. What you also want to do is talk about your expectations. So tell him what you're expected, expecting of him after month one, month three, month six. This is really important uh, because then it gives him an understanding of how he is doing. He can track himself. 
but it also gives you structure to the conversations you'll have with him going forward so you can really see how he's doing. So you know if he's delivering, you know if you're delivering and you know how you can help each other to make sure that he is successful. On that point, Take some time also to talk about how you're going to help him be successful. So what the onboarding process is going to look like. How are you going to get him up to speed in his job and help him understand what your business does? And finally, probably one of the most important parts of this is it gives you time to have some one-to-one with him. You are the most important person. <laughs> that, that, that sounds good, right? You are the most important person to him. Because you're the one he's got to impress, you're the one he's really got to understand and get on with to enable him to be successful in this job. So take that opportunity to have some time with him today. Yay, it's lunchtime. Time for your new hire to get social with his new team members. I'm sure you've already done some introductions, but obviously this is a great opportunity for him to get to know them better. One tip I have for this is think about a way to introduce him that isn't just around his his work experience. So normal introductions go something like, this is Jack, he's from ABC Insurance, and he's a financial controller. Mm, All true, not really interesting. Why don't you add in another line to that introduction to say something like, he lives in Winchester, he's just run the Paris Marathon, and he um, likes to go kayaking at the weekend with his two sons. It just gives an extra dimension and more things for people to talk about. Ugh, the worst thing about being the new guy is having all those stupid questions, isn't it? And he really doesn't want to come to you to ask those questions. You're the one he's trying to impress. So assign him a buddy, someone probably on the same level as him, that has some patience, that will answer those questions that everybody has. The guy that will be able to have a chat to him after the first few meetings just to help Jack decipher what on earth is going on. So really worth doing um, and it really will help him get up to speed quicker. Ah, the paperwork. Try and make this a minimal part of the day. Send out as much as you can beforehand so that he can read the contract and the employee handbook before he even gets there. You've got so many more important things to do today than be buried in paperwork. And if his closest bond of the day is with the HR advisor, you might have it a little bit out of kilter. When someone starts a new job, a lot of time is spent showing them how to do their job. But generally, not enough time is spent telling them why they're doing that job. What impact does what they do have on your business? The biggest way to get a motivated, engaged workforce is really to make them feel like they're part of something bigger. That they're in something together with, with a wider team. So the best way to do this is really spend some time letting them learn about your business. This isn't something that you're going to get done and dusted on day one. It's going to be something that you're spreading over the next few weeks and beyond that. It's something you should really be keeping an eye on. Um, But let's kick it off today. One way to do that is um, look at what makes your business tick. What's at the heart of it? What do you do? Why do customers come to you? What makes you a little bit different from the rest? So find a way just to give them a little bit of a snapshot in that today. So let's say, for example, you're a software company. Sit them down with one of the sales guys and go through one of the sales demos and let the sales guy help them understand why a customer would buy that from them. What what problem is that software solving? Perhaps you're a charity and, and your new hire can spend some time with your fundraising team to understand what your beneficiaries receive from, from all the good work that you do. Or maybe you're a retailer. You know, why help them understand why a customer comes to you instead of another shop. And this will really help cement what they do in their mind and really give them a big picture of why they're there in the first place. Right, it's getting towards the end of the day and it's probably getting to the stage where his eyes are looking a little bit glazed. So now's the time for him take a little downtime to process what he has learned today. Research has shown that by taking 15 minutes at the end of the day just to think about what you've learned helps you process that information but also makes your brain much more ready to take in more information the following day. 
You made it. It's the end of day one and he's still here. He is, isn't he? So one last thing. Don't let him leave without checking in with him finally at the end of the day. Just 10 minutes. See how he's done. See what he's feeling. See what the best bits of the day were. By doing this today and every day for the next few days will really help you catch any concerns he may have, answer any questions and redirect any onboarding that you've got to make sure that, that you're making this personal to him and, and doing everything you can to make him successful. So did you do it? Did you make his first day amazing? There's four things that you need to ask yourself at the end of day one. Really simple. One, has he got to know you better? Two, has he got to know the team a little bit and started that process? Three, does he know more around what expectations you have of him and, and what his job is actually going to be? And finally, does he know what to expect going forward? What's he got to look forward to over the next few weeks? But most importantly, how did you make him feel? Your aim should be to be sending him home as excited tonight as he was this morning when he was sitting in reception. When you think about structuring your first day for your new hire, think about what the conversation is going to be like when they get home at the end of that first day with their family. What are they going to say about their new job? What do you want them to say about their new job? You know, a first day like this does take some prep, but it is so worth it. If you can send him home with a spring in a step, you are so much more likely to keep hold of him for the long haul. First impressions are absolutely critical. If you want to learn a little bit more about how to make this day special, I've gone into a bit more detail in a blog post I have on my website, New Hire 365. You can find the link just below in the comments. No one should have a bad first day at work. Go on, make it amazing.